Five years ago, I joined Dr. Linda Broom in Kosciuszko National Park to find out about the mountain pygmy possum, a threatened species she's been working to save for over 25 years. That was during a major drought and possum numbers were alarmingly low. Now in 2012, after plenty of rain, I'm rejoining Linda to find out about the possum's progress. Also working with Linda is a student all the way from China, Hai Jing, and she's writing a PhD about the possums. We're on Snow Ridge near Cabramara. We're a couple of kilometres out of Cabramara. And this is a huge basalt boulder field on top of the hill that we didn't know existed until two years ago. We did trap it last October. And this site, um, we got 92, 92 possums, which is the highest numbers we've ever caught on any of the sites in Kosciuszko National Park. By 2008 at Mount Blue Cow, we'd got down to one female possum. Yeah, and it was really very worrying and at Charlotte Pass the numbers had dropped by 30% as well. Um, and I was attributing it to a whole combination of drought, lack of food, increased predation because snow was melting earlier. The numbers at the southern sites just in the last year, last November, had picked up again after the drought following the two years of rain which was, which was a great relief but it just shows how susceptible they are to, to drought and prolonged dry periods. The mountain pygmy possum is very, a quite endangered animal. It's similar to the Chinese giant panda, so it's quite interesting. I am really enjoying my study. You got that one? When I finished the possum, I really want to study the giant panda, and Lina is going to come to help me in China again. <laughs> <laughs> that will be exciting, a little bit different from, it uh, might be a bit hard to put a little panda in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's so with the traps all set, we'll return in the morning to hopefully find and examine some healthy possums. Oh look, it's a nice morning. Yeah, it's not Let's that cold. We, no, it's, it's quite good. Let's see how many possums we've got today. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the next morning and we're here to check our traps and see if we've got any pygmy possums waiting for us. But something seems to be bothering Hai Jing this morning. When checking the first possum trap, which turned out to be empty, I asked her what was on her mind and it turns out she'd had a bad dream overnight. I was dreaming last night and we didn't catch anything. I was struggling why we didn't catch any possum. and I was so upset in my dream. So hopefully, hopefully we can get some in the in next traps. Linda went on to the next trap and soon allayed Hai Jing's fears. Linda, do you get some closed traps? Yeah, it's a possum. Oh, great. Mm, a bit sleepy. Oh. <laughs> After this last year, um, I was getting really worried and we've started looking into doing a captive breeding program which we'll still do um, because the prognosis is that we're going to get more of these extended drought periods. Hai Jing's dream was definitely no prophecy. As we progressed through the traps, there were plenty of possums ready and waiting to be examined. These animals are so precious. Look at this rough, rocky habitat and you've got this gorgeous little creature that lives here and is so well adapted to the alpine environment. And I never cease to, to marvel at them every time I trap them. They're so gentle, they're so calm. They, <laughs> I can talk, talk with a possum in my hand and it doesn't really mind at all. <laughs> If I'd seen this area 25 years ago, I would have said, yes, there's a possibility of possums being here. Let's have a look. There's always something new to find, and it just goes to show you that you should never stop looking. To get people to understand that and to see the animals then gives them a feeling of appreciation for the area and wanting to, to care for it for the future, which is what we need to do. Although it's heartening to see increased numbers of the species, a few years of rain is no guarantee of anything. 
But as long as there are people like Linda and Hai Ching undertaking this important monitoring work and drawing our attention to this wonderful little critter, that's what gives us hope for the long term.